In this section, we will examine Material Ledger specific configuration settings. The first configuration step will be to activate Material Ledger for the relevant valuation areas. As you know, if you are evaluating materials on a plant level, a valuation area is the same thing as a plant. As I have mentioned before, activation of Material Ledger is mandatory in S4 HANA. But activation of the actual costing functionality is not. As we go through the configuration, we will see that activating Material Ledger is not the same thing as activating actual costing. A separate configuration step is required to activate actual costing. Let's open the IMG menu and locate the Material Ledger settings that can be found under Product Cost Controlling. You can also access this configuration screen using transaction OMX1. Double click Active Material Ledger and this screen opens. Let's find our valuation area. This checkbox here activates the material ledger for a certain valuation area. SAP recommends you to activate material ledger for all plants that belong to the same company code, so there won't be any inconsistencies with financial postings. This material price determination key here is very important to understand. This key determines the default rule for material price determination. The value that you maintain here will be the default value the system is proposing for a material when you are creating new materials belonging to this valuation area. As you remember from our introduction session, actual costing provides us a period unit price that is calculated at the end of each period using actual material costs. This periodic unit price can then be used to reevaluate your inventory. If we want that periodic unit prices are calculated for a material, the material price determination key needs to be 3, which stands for single and multi-level price determination. It can also be possible that you wish to use the regular moving average price for a certain raw material, even if periodic unit prices are calculated for the other raw materials in a plant for which actual costing is activated. In this case, we would select the option 2 as the price determination key for this material together with price control indicator V. The price determination key is maintained in the Material Master. We will be returning to this key during the next chapter when we are reviewing costing-related master data. If we would tick this checkbox here, it means that the price determination rule selected here will be the mandatory choice for all materials part of this valuation area. If we do not tick this checkbox, it means that we could still use regular moving average price to value certain materials. The next configuration step is to maintain a material ledger type and select which currency types can be used for a certain material ledger type. I move one step back and select the configuration screen Assign Currency Types to Material Ledger Type. You can also use T code OMX2. This is the material ledger type we will be using for our scenario. If you tick this checkbox here, the system will use the currency types maintained in transaction. OB22. If you also tick this checkbox, the system will also use currency types maintained behind a currency and valuation profile. If you want to manually select which currency types you want the system to use, you need to tick this checkbox. Let's check which currency types have been manually maintained for this ledger type. We can see three currency types here. It is always mandatory to maintain currency type 10, which is used for legal valuation. You can also see currency types 31 and 32 maintained here. These 31 and 32 are based on the currency type 30, which is used for group valuation. The next configuration step is to assign this material ledger type maintained here to our valuation areas. I move two steps back and open the next config screen. The transaction code is OMX3. Here you can see that the ledger type is linked with the plant we will be using. After we have linked the material ledger type with a valuation area, we have to do one more step related to the currency and valuation profiles. It is not enough to assign a profile to a controlling area, but there is a specific transaction you need to run to activate the profile in the area. I need to go back to the general controlling menu and then locate multiple valuation approaches. Check and execute activation screen, which can be found under Multiple Valuation Approaches menu.
As this activation is already done in the IDES environment we are using, we can keep check activation selected and then press execute. The system shows us that the profile is already active. The transaction also displays all the linkages we have done in our previous configuration steps. So this report is also a good checkpoint to see if you have done all the necessary configuration steps so far. Before we move forward to more important configurations, let's quickly double check that number ranges have been maintained correctly for material ledger documents. If you have some user experience with SAP, you know that SAP is full of different types of documents and number ranges that need to be maintained for all of them. Let's go to transaction OXM4 to check the ranges. After I press display intervals, we can confirm that number ranges have been maintained for different groups. You can examine the groups by clicking this button here. Next, let's talk about dynamic price changes. If you activate dynamic price change for a company code, this means that the price marked as the future price of a material will automatically be released as the current standard valuation price after the first material movement during the new posting period. This setting can be used to make sure that the marked valuation price will be used even if the releasing of the new price has not been performed. Let's open the configuration screen for dynamic price change. The T code for this screen is OMX5. In standard IDES configuration, this dynamic price release has not been activated. But if you want, you are free to activate it for the valuation area we are using. We have just a little bit more material ledger specific configuration to go through. Next, let's have a quick review about the settings related to the movement type groups. These settings are something that are already maintained in the system by default, and there is usually no need to make changes to them, but it's still a good idea to have a brief look to understand more how the system works. Let's open the Define Material Movement Type Groups of Material Ledger Config screen that can be found under Material Update Menu. If at the end of a period, we want to be able to reevaluate the raw material consumption that happened during the manufacturing using actual prices, we need to activate revaluation rules for these movement type groups. Here you can see that value 2 has been maintained for the movement type group CC. This CC covers movement types, consumption to cost center, and its reversal. The value 2 means that when consumption is revaluated, also controlling cost object is revalued in addition to the general ledger account. You can also see that value 1 has been maintained for the movement type group CF. Group CF covers movement types, sales delivery, and its reversal. For sales deliveries, we need to reevaluate only GL account so we can maintain one for this group. Next, let's make sure that these movement type groups have been assigned to the correct movement types. Let's open the Assign Material Ledger Movement Type Groups configuration screen. T code for this is OMX0. Let's search this long list using Movement Type 201, which stands for Goods Issue for Cost Center. We can see that Movement Type Group CC has been linked with this movement type. What this means is that all material movements of Type 201 will be recorded into the material ledger. Let's also search the list using Movement Type 601, which stands for Sales Deliveries. As you can see, movement type group CF is maintained here. The next step is to link material update structure to our valuation area. Material update structure is used to group together different transactions in the material ledger. For example, all procurement related transactions are their own group and material consumption related transactions their own. Let's open transaction OMX8. Here you can see that I have linked the default 0001 update structure to our valuation area.
If you want to examine the setting related to this structure, you can go to transaction OMX9. It's very rare that you need to make any changes to this standard structure, and you need to have some very specific business requirements if you need to be changing the settings here. We have now finished our review of Material Ledger specific configuration. In the next and final section of this chapter of the course, we will be examining how actual costing is activated and how valuation areas are set as productive.